My job before Google, though, was at BBC News. I was there for seven years. And I was at uh, different uh, you know, TV and radio newsrooms in Millbank and Birmingham and uh, New Broad Hosting House uh, for like a week and then left. Um, <laughs> but um, so this is going to be quite informal. We'll go through. I've got a few American made uh, YouTube videos. So just caveat it with that, slightly California feel to it. But at the end of it, just throw questions and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. Um, so Google Plus, what is it? Uh, if we had to compare it to other places, which we, for obvious reasons, don't like to do, and how I'd say in a pub to my friends, you know, it's Facebook is for your friends and family, Twitter is for people that you um, know um, just through the internet, i.e. celebrities, politicians, or people who've got the same sort of interest as you. And for me personally, that is much more the kind of Google Plus model. It's more about hobbies, you know, uh, interests. So. There's a lot of activity going on there. It's less than two years old. We're coming up to our two-year anniversary in a couple of weeks when we sort of opened it up to the public. Um, there are various features which, uh, you know, are great for consumers. There's a lot of the emphasis there is private sharing. So when I put a photograph of myself up there and I don't want my colleagues to see it, I can at a point of posting, say, you know, get my sort of Google colleagues out of the way, whereas, you know, on other places you'd have to tailor it. Um, there's lots of little benefits like that, things called Hangouts, which are basically video calls between your friends, again, private. But for brands, and this is what I'm going to really focus on today, there's a couple of things which I think are really useful, particularly for publishers and broadcasters and newspapers, you know, whether you're in print or not. So let's just go through the sort of state of play of the UK as we see it. So basically, all the national newspapers are on there. Um, and when I say on there, it means they've got a presence, they've got a Google Plus page. Um, you know, you can post uh, embedded YouTube videos, photo galleries. You can write long essays, or long posts, lots of different things like that. Of the ones that are on there, though, I think the best example um, of publishers in the world, actually, is The Economist. Here's why. So The Economist um, are the eighth biggest brand on Google Plus in the world, up there with big brands like, you know, your wafer and... Barcelona Football Club, all these sort of things. And the reason they got to such a good sort of standing point, uh, you know, less than two years, they're over 4 million followers, is because they really think about programming their posts. Every day they have a daily chart, and they'll hashtag it daily chart. So people know there's a behavior there that, you know, the economist is going to give me a daily chart I can engage with every single day. Um, every post has a great image on there, and they've got a really strong call to action as well. So they're not just sort of leaving it there. They're encouraging people to play with it, to engage with it. And obviously, for the economists, it's a certain kind of news they're delivering, but they're able to get back meaningful, long-form comments, maybe even videos from users as well about what they think about the, um, uh, the economist content. In terms of broadcasters in the UK, all of these are active on Google Plus in various different ways. Let's start from the top left. So Channel 4 News, the page, they tend to do Hangouts, which we'll talk you through in detail in a moment, as a second screen. So 12 o'clock in the, in the daytime, they'll do a Hangout involving up to 10 people, including Christian and all the main hosts, talking about a big event. So, for example, the first one they did was Leveson, a 40-minute debate. I mean, when are you ever going to see a 40-minute debate about one issue on you know, traditional television? Probably never now. Um, BBC News. Um, I've done some Hangouts where they'll do them on the Wednesday. They'll film them live, so they'll go out live on the YouTube channel, live on the BBC News website, and then two days later, they'll appear as part of a package on uh, you know, BBC World News and BBC Two news programs. Sky News were the first in the UK and in Europe to use Hangouts live on television. So when the US elections were going on, they had Hangouts as part of a, like a window a feed, essentially, on the Sky News TV channel. And in that, you had people in their kitchens, in their living rooms, you know, people that represented different parts of the states. Kind of um, the people they picked were representative of what you'd imagine that state to be, perhaps, you know, a cowboy and maybe like a, a housewife or whatever. So interesting uses. And ITV News, hopefully, you know, um, perhaps a question for Jason tomorrow, but hopefully they are sort of the next people to take a look at using Hangouts. Um, in terms of just, you know, to give you a feel of the other kind of brands that are on there in terms of publishing world, most of these are on there and doing, yeah, all these are on there. Um, some of them are more successful than others in terms of what they've tried. Um, 
why, for example, does quite well in there. Vogue is a brand that we're working with quite a lot at the moment. So very quickly, we'll get this bit out of the way and then we'll go straight into Hangouts. But what makes a better practice page? Of course, I'm at the Guardian, so of course it's the Guardian. Um, very quickly, they've got a verified page, which is that tick at the top. They're trying new things, so a new feature like community, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, they've added that, they're having a go at it. And also the hashtags, which I've sort of circled there. That is a three-month-old product, which is on Google Plus now. So when you click on a hashtag, it revolves the card, turns it around, and you're able to engage with all the content that is there. And there's something I'll show you in a moment, which takes hashtags onto another level when, it, uh, when you look at it on search, for example. Um, I thought the Times and Bloomberg might be here as well, so also good examples of Google Plus activity here, just to sort of say it's not just a Guardian. Um, but the Guardian um, is active on Google Plus as a newspaper, so when you go to search, this right hand side is called the Knowledge Panel. So if you put the Guardian into Google Search, you're able to populate the right hand side there with you know, a logo and the last two stories. This is algorithmic, so it won't always be there. Um, but I think, you know, as a suggestion as why you might want to invest resource into this, that's quite a good um, thing to point towards. Um, also, there's things called uh, on Google Plus called Google. So here, Jemima Kiss. This is an old presentation. I go back to October, but um, Jemima has a Google Plus profile. So every time she writes an article, she's able to publish it on her own profile, which means on Google search, every time Jemima is mentioned, her image appears. So um, again, relatively new, less than two years old, this feature. So um, people will be able to find the journalist content in one place as opposed to you know, going all over the web to find it. This week as well, there's some other new things coming. Um, this was literally launched two days ago. So you might have, might have heard uh, about this already in the press. So um, YouTube comments powered by Google Plus. That's the other one, actually. Let's go to da, 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 da. wrong image. Hey, great. Um, YouTube comments. Basically, there was a perception that if I go and to watch a YouTube video, I want to see relevant comments on there. I don't want to see just the last one on there, perhaps. So now what we're doing and rolling out across YouTube will be um, a feature that allows you to see relevant comments to you. So if you're watching a video, like using an example of Justin Timberlake as the sort of example, you can see the engineers in Mountain View are very fed up with referencing Justin Timberlake and other examples. But Justin Timberlake video is there. If Justin Timberlake put a comment underneath his YouTube video, that's uh, something that people have liked, they've sort of favoured and they want to go and find it. Now that comment is at the top of the comment list as opposed to it being just in the ream of all these random comments. So you'll start noticing that over the next few days uh, and I'll encourage you to go and look on YouTube to see um, what it looks like in, in uh, real life. The visual that we have there, which I'll just skip through now, blah, blah, blah. Um, is another feature which is launching just now in the US and Canada only, but uh, should soon be coming here, which is hashtags on search. So uh, if you put into Google search a hashtag like Emmys, hashtag Emmys, or hashtag America's Cup, on the right hand side, soon you'll start to see that content appear on the right hand side. So, for example, this is the Emmys one, which was obviously the first time we trialled this publicly. So, hashtag Emmys goes into search. On the right-hand side, you can see a post from Berg, a post on Big Bang Theory. And if you go onto um, Google search in the US and Canada at the moment, you'll see it, it sort of illustrates really nicely. It sort of the cards come up like this. You're able to find and navigate around much more. Another example is the America's Cup. So, hashtag America's Cup, and this post comes up on the right-hand side. So basically, the point I'm trying to make. Sorry, mate. How is that designed? Um, what, what content is displayed on that one? So, as far as I understand it, very much we've yet to have it and play with it in the UK properly. Is its most popular content, um, and going to be algorithmically based as well. But um, if I would, I would be lying if I understood exactly how it's going to work at the moment. 
But the point I was trying to get to, perhaps badly there, was that with Google Plus, there's constantly new features being added. The main point about Google Plus is that uh, it's a social spy for all of Google's sort of products. So things like Gmail, Maps, YouTube. Um, if you have any sort of um, presence on those places, then Google Plus is something you should kind of consider. The sort of aspect I work mostly on, though, is Hangouts on Air. And this is something that I've engaged with um, a lot of uh, newspapers and broadcasters on. Um, just a remark regarding Hangouts on Air. So this is being uh, broadcasted on air uh, with the Hangout on air. My head. No, 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 you, it's perfect. <laughs> um, we have a live, uh, live demo rah, on Hangouts on air. <laughs> um, So we're now in Hangout on air as well, which hopefully uh, is being swatched by no one other. Uh, no, no, no. But uh, Hangouts on air, basically, uh, I think that has excited a lot of people around the world. It's all free technology, everything that we're talking about now. It's something that, you know, all of you now, if you had a Google Plus account, could set the Hangouts up. If you didn't have a Google Plus account, all of you could watch it. Um, and as I said at the beginning, brands like BBC, Sky, Channel 4 are using Hangouts already. What I do now, though, is show you an example of a US broadcaster to a state um, channel in North California, where a broadcaster has used Hangouts in there, really sort of taken it to their heart and integrated it properly into their local TV service. So if we, by well, the magic of this gizmo here, we can go to, hopefully, da, 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 da. where is it? Move that one. Oh, yeah, it's there. Huh? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So basically, Sarah Hill is a news anchor for a local TV channel in California, I think. Um, certainly, uh, the west side of the US where she basically uses Hangouts on Air to bring normal, you know, everyday people into the broadcast on television. So rather than having, you know, polished correspondence or expensive satellite feeds at various locations across her news patch, she's able to have people in their homes, in their kitchens, uh, talking to her live on television. What she does is kind of very ambitious in that she has one earpiece listening to her director, a one earpiece listening to the people on the Hangout at the same time. How she does that, I don't know. <laughs> what I would suggest, though, is that this is, you know, a very cool example of how to use Hangouts, but there are examples we'll talk about next, which are much more, in my opinion, easy to do and will offer as much uh, return. So let's have a look and see if it will play. Hopefully it will. If it's buffering, let's fingers crossed. My wheels are constantly turning about what we might need to be able to do in our news broadcast. It all has to do with providing accurate record and being a resource for people who reach out to us. In our business, Sometimes we think that we need to give you information, 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 and we've kind of forgotten the fact that we need to listen. What Sarah's doing is she's gone from traditional news reporting format where there's a person standing on the screen and they throw news at you to a format where people can come in and join the conversation. From your home, you can log in, Sarah gives the news, and she says, Jack, what do you think about that? It's essentially a hybrid newscast that combines social media with TV. Sarah does something that's really unique. She has an earbud in each ear. And one ear she's listening to her producer. I hear about that from my love. And the other ear she's listening to us. Sarah, what are you talking about today? As she's reporting the news, she's hearing our feedback. Sometimes she incorporates that into the newscast. <laughs> Anybody can help you with the new button. Hey gang, I'm Sarah Hill. Welcome everyone. I'm a part of you. Everybody here on the radio. I'm not sure what I'm talking about. 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 Okay. It's an honor. You guys, two more reports of the same strain. The poster anchor for a show using social media is like the only air traffic controller on duty in New York or Chicago. It's mind-boggling. 
No longer will news stations have to have someone on the scene of breaking news. People who are unhappy about the condition of streets in the neighborhood, they now are significant contributors to a story. As news organizations, we are realizing that we need to come down from that mountain that we've placed ourselves on and listen to people. I don't want for my kids to be sitting there in front of the TV, having the news thrown at them and not have a say. I want them to have the feeling that they can contribute to that conversation. There's beauty in getting people Form and allowing people to share their stories. Okay. So, in my opinion, she deserves a medal for broadcasting. Um, so, what she had there was a Google Plus Hangout on Air live on the internet. It was being broadcast on YouTube, um, broadcast on that station's Google Plus page embeddable on any website of their choice, so um, people don't have to log into Google Plus if they don't want to. Um, and most importantly, it was bringing you know, viewers into the broadcast. So rather than being an old-fashioned, this is the news, it was a two-way conversation. In the UK, we're seeing um, brands sort of testing it. I have to say, in the UK, we're doing very well compared to most of the countries and how far we've gone with this. Um, most of our sort of brands have at some point consider it, considered using it or played with it already, and there are plans for many more, um, certainly uh, towards the end of this year as well. BBC News, here you have them in, with Lise Doucette talking about Pakistan in a um, new broadcasting house in London with people in their homes, their studies, their libraries, wherever, across the world talking about you know, the, um, the issue there. She sat there with Ben James, who uh, is a producer, who is presenting it, and they're sort of having a chat, very informal chat, um, which can go on for up to four hours. You can have up to ten people in this, but you know, I would suggest, you know, with my sort of BBC hat on, five, six people is enough. Thirty minutes is more than enough to have a decent debate, but the, technically, you can go on for as long as you want. Sky News, they, uh, you know, think about that. Uh, about their brand, it's Sky News HD, I and mean, this is them in the real newsroom with their foreign affairs correspondent talking to two people in Gaza City and two people in Tel Aviv um, back in uh, November, I think it is, when they were you know, in the middle of a conflict. Really engaging content that you know, went on for about 30 minutes or so. Uh, these are people that he's interviewed previously, I think, or they've certainly contacts or perhaps contacts provided from a stringer. And you're getting real people talking about what they think and you know, no sort of limit to um, you know, time or anything like that. Channel 4 News, I think, in terms of the UK, are definitely the best broadcaster at using them so far. They've um, got a section on their website, which you can go to their website and put Google Hangouts on. It lists all the ones they've done. They've done everything from the Kenyan election, sexual identity, to uh, gun laws. Um, they did one outside to talk about the environment. This is the first one they did with Leveson. The new Leveson was coming for weeks. And obviously, they want to get all these experts down to their TV studio to talk about it. You know, but realistically, on TV, are you going to get 40-minute debate about Leveson? Um, probably not. You know, without commercial breaks and all the rest of it. Here, they could um, have a very informal but very uh, intelligent and meaningful chat. Christian is in the Channel 4 newsroom with probably people having their lunch around him. But actually, we found that people really engage and like that kind of quality. In terms of publishers that are using Google Plus, The Economist, again, is the best example to point to in the UK and worldwide, I think. Um, they started off with Mark on the left, who's a social editor, doing everything himself. So if you see their first one they did back in July uh, last year, talking about the Olympic Games, it looks very different to what they've achieved here. But all of it is just a learning curve. The reason why The Economist are the best at doing this is because they just tried it and played around with it and saw what worked and what didn't work perhaps as well. Um, things like the, these lower third Astons are all on there as well, so you can make it look as much part of your sort of brand furniture as you want. But here they're talking about, you know, I think this is one where they announced who they wanted to support as US president. So and they've done things like book launches. They've also done things um, like interviewing the cartoonist who's been with the, the Economist for 30 years or so giving readers a real chance to talk to the cartoonists they have loved over the years. So things like behind the scenes um, material you don't get on television do very well on here. Things like reviews do very well on here. 
um, where people are being a bit more honest and maybe lifting the veil on the newsroom. You know, uh, things like, would you ever have a newsroom editorial meeting on a Hangout? You know, why not? Um, lots of different things that you can think of. Um, across the world, though, people are already doing it. You know, you've had high-profile ones like Angela Merkel having Hangouts where she's interacting with voters. It was meant to go on for about 40 minutes, but she wanted it to continue for a whole hour. Um, Weather.com, Tornado Hunt, um, not going to endorse that one publicly, but uh, here they're using Hangouts to basically bring a feed in. You know that some NBC affiliate stations have used Hangouts when there's been a big storm to, you know, their satellite truck can't put the, the um, uh, satellite up. Um, newspapers around the world are doing Hangouts um, with Germany and Australia. Really interesting use of uh, Hangouts to connect voters to the um, politicians. And you've seen decent brands, decent newspapers using it as a way to create basically free exclusive video content for their websites. Current events, hot topics, so yes, big debates, um, Q&A sessions like the Angela Merkel one, meet the experts, you know, that can be the cartoonist or that can be the fashion designer of your brand or the editor of your certain section of your newspaper. Lots of different sort of themes that are on there. We won't go to this example uh, just because of time, but you know, in LA, Good Day LA is their local sort of GMTV sunrise equivalent. They do a second screen um, every day. So they'll have the Channel 4 news style thing with Christian every day with the same person. Um, and she will probably interview a celebrity most days. So if there's a celebrity in the studio as part of the bid for them being there, they'll do a very informal um, interview with them afterwards as well. Other brands are kind of tying together, so very.co.uk and Glamour magazine are coming together to do things like fashion, you know, look up what you can wear this season, all that sort of stuff. Brands are also sort of playing around with it, so they're using Hangouts to feature as part of chat shows, bringing people. Um, Boris Johnson's also had a go. This is him talking to businesses in Silicon Valley, an independent um, trade show that was uh, in the autumn, I think. But the other example I wanted to point to really, which is kind of you know a very ambitious but exciting project for Huffington Post, is Huffington Post Live or Huff Post Live they call it. Basically, everyone knows Huffington Post. They realised that people were commenting on comments on their website. So they knew there was a big appetite for people to basically talk to each other and to real people, real viewers, real users to talk about things they really care about. So using um, Hangouts on air, again, all of this is free to use for anyone. They've, able, they've been able to basically build themselves an internet TV channel. It's um, informal, as this sort of picture implies. Uh, they've got people on the Hangout who are joining in the conversation. But they do talk about you know, a lot of different kind of subjects. Sometimes it can be about you know, celebrity stuff or magazine lifestyle stuff. Other times it can be um, you know, more serious. This is how they get people on. So people come to HuffPost Live website, which of course is merging and you know linked to from the main Huffington Post website. You go to this sort of hub, um, you click be an on-air guest, you go through to a hangout in their gallery, you have a chat with the producer, and if you have something to they want to bring into the show, then they'll invite you to the main sort of hangout as it were. Um, integrated with Twitter, Facebook, you know, a really sort of powerful tool for them. Um, let's see if we can go and find it now. It's might not be on because of the timing, but um, we'll see. So here, perfect timing, someone's using Skype. Um, but they're using a real mixture of mediums. So this is live now. They're connecting to people in their real, you know, living room sets of real uh, environments. Nothing sort of, you can remember when people go on TV and they're sort of in Berlin, you've got Brandenburg Gate here and sort of, you know, the TV tab here, they sort of fake backgrounds. That kind of goes away when you bring all people in. You know, people don't live next door to Brandenburg Gate and all that, so it's much more realistic sort of way of thinking about it. So that kind of brings us to an end. There's some next steps we can go through if you want to know more about Google Plus. Particularly, but I think it's probably a better idea to have some questions about Hangouts and how they work, or to take any wider questions about um, 
how sort of Google Plus could interact with people at home as well. So does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Um, are there any tips about things like moderating um, feedback? Yeah. So that's a really good uh, point. And I think if you s if I talk about some of the broadcasters who are using Google Plus Hangouts already, that would hopefully imply that you know uh, people are using it knowing that everything is post moderated. So um, when you have a Hangout you can ask people to go or you can remove them as the broadcaster. Um, from my experience, and this is me talking, you know, my old BBC hat, not as a official line, but I would never have put someone on television or even on phone and radio without talking to them beforehand. Um, for various reasons, legal, and also because you want to know what kind of, if you, if you want to have an hour show, an hour broadcast, you want it to sort of have a, a story arc to it, or you want to just have different colour in it. You don't want to have people who are angry, who are happy, and all that. So, so I would still suggest that this is a produced piece of content. There are those, and one broadcaster has just tried doing it, where they'll literally just open the gates and anyone can come in. Um, it's just not my, in my sort of experience that that would necessarily mean it's great content. Um, so moderating. I think is you know, uh, treat it as though you would, you know, a live radio phone in, um, or TV interview. And at the end of the day, if it's got your brand on it, you're recording it live to YouTube. You're creating video content that really, you know, you should think about. You know, if it's called the Guardian Hangout, then you know, take it with the seriousness of that would sort of imply, I suppose. Yeah. How does the sound work on Google Plus? Because like the last time I did it, I think. Um, if you say, if you're like the moderator, if you set up, are you able to toggle between um, which uh, between um, which um, webcam is like being focused on for the people who who would be watching it on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I mean, the other issue question. So let's try and find it. Okay, let's pause it up there. So what you're seeing here. Right. So. Um, this is a slightly old interface, so it doesn't look quite as like this anymore, but um, it's the same sort of principle. So Sarah Hill is signed in here. If Sarah wants to control who's in that main screen, then all she does is get her mouse and it's click on the face. And I suggest as a brand, you definitely want that because uh, you know you want to control who's in there. And also, say if Sarah at the beginning said, right, let's introduce our panel of journalists. Uh, it's Tim, it's Sarah, it's Jane, and you can literally show them, show them up like a vision mix, okay? The standard and default uh, is for the person who's talking to be in the, in the main frame, which if you're talking, you know, between friends about them or what you can get mum for Christmas, it probably doesn't really matter as much who is in the main screen, you can all hear each other at the same time. If it's a branded hangout, you're sort of presenting on your own website and you want people to watch, you know, on their mobile phones two weeks later, a month later, then I would consider that you know, an aspect of vision mixing. Um, that's a really good point as well. I mean, driving live video, and the Guardian and other brands will know this already, driving people to watch live video is hard. You know, you have to put promotional effort into these things. The bigger win is for people who are watching this video two hours or two months later, and they'll probably be watching it on their mobile phone or on their tablet whilst they're doing something else or on a bus or something. The idea that we're creating, you know, you know, appointment viewing, um, I personally think that it's much more about video on demand and people sort of using it when they want and they feel like it. No other questions at all. We have one from the live feed, and I just sent a tweet to try and get it um, clarified, but it's from Rich from Metro, which is about, I think it's about the Google Plus pages. Um, do you have any sort of extra information about um, traffic referral stats? So when you talk about the economists and all the great stuff they put in, what are they getting back? So there's nothing that I have uh, from brands to share. We don't have that information. I'd say that... Um, a lot of what people are doing now is they're setting the groundwork for, you know, how they want to use things like YouTube and any other Google products now. I mean, 
clearly, when you compare the growth of Google Plus to other platforms, you know, we are less than two years old. Um, but I think, you know, when you look at some of the products like Hangouts and Air, which are all free, you're creating a free way to create video content, video archive for your YouTube channels, or also for your um, websites. There's still a way to go. You know, we're adding new features all the time, and we're getting feedback all the time as well. But I think, would you rather get your architecture in there now, or wait for you know another few months before you feel like you you, you need to catch up? That's my kind of personal view. Anything else about Hangouts at all, or any other questions? Cool. Thank you very much. Good luck on your challenge. It sounds like extremely hard. <laughs> um, I'm glad I'm not doing it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Matt. And I don't know if you're going to be able to stay around a bit or if you. I'm uh, say about half an hour. You can, can go after that. Yeah. So if if uh, uh, anybody has has more questions to to Matt, don't hesitate to to come to him uh, during the next uh, half hour. Uh, th thank you very much. I think it's it's uh, so I won't say inspiring because uh, I saw Joanna's <laughs> tweet right now saying it's it's too much pressure on the speakers uh, to say they are inspiring. Um, but uh, no, I think it was a very good insight on what can be done uh, using uh, different tools for for to engage user uh, users and and get comments in, in different ways. Uh, um, so I think I'm going to stop the yeah, live. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> OK. So I don't know. It's just <laughs> uh, I just wanted to show you the, this uh, uh, video we shot at Clary.